In this video, we're making a tart cherry mead. This mead's quite tasty and super easy to do. So let's learn how to make it. We're gonna start with our recipe card. We're getting right into this mead. This recipe card's for a one gallon brew, so you can scale up if you want to, or scale down, I guess, if you would like to as well. Cherry meads are quite tough because they can sometimes come out with like a medicinal cherry taste. Lots of people will report that with sweet cherries. I don't think as much with tart cherries. Specifically with these tart cherries, we're gonna need to back sweeten this brew when we get to the end because I have a feeling it's gonna need that. You'll see that back sweetened honey based off of this recipe card. To start this brew, we're gonna get all of our necessary equipment, which you can see on the screen. I highly recommend fermenting in a bucket because of the amount of space that the fruit will take up. The recipe is gonna go over one gallon at the start, but we'll eventually end up with a little over a gallon or right at a gallon after the primary fermentation. This brew starts 24 hours before we mix anything up. You're gonna take your tart cherries, put them into a container and sprinkle some pectic enzyme over them. You then leave that container out at room temperature for about 24 hours. The pectic enzyme breaks down the fruit skins and gets more juice out of them. After 24 hours, you go ahead and mix together your honey, your water and your yeast with the cherries you're gonna take a starting gravity to figure out your specific gravity for this brew. The starting gravity for our brew is 1.090. This means we're gonna end right at 12% ABV once fermentation is done. We are using the Lauben QA23 because it's great for tropical fruited meads and cherry meads in my experience. It gets up to 16% ABV, so we should definitely see this go to 1.000 after the fermentation. Since this is higher ABV, we're gonna go ahead and stagger our nutrient. We split out our yeast nutrient and added it over the course of two days. Fermentation took about two weeks and then we let it set for another week on top of those cherries. We took another gravity reading and found that the new gravity was indeed 1.000. This means that we went through 90 points of gravity, which is about 12% uh, ABV. We racked it into a new container with our auto siphon and tubing You'll notice that this brew is about one gallons of liquid post racking. This brew is definitely gonna need to be back sweetened. We wanted to make sure that it would not re-ferment, so we stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. You can alternatively pasteurize if you would like to do that instead. We waited about 24 hours after stabilizing and then back sweetened it. I recommend between three quarter and one pound of honey to back sweeten. I also thought this could use some oak flavor, so we ended up adding some Amberana oak, which is kind of a rarer and weirder kind of oak that has graham cracker and spice profiles. However, you can use regular oak chips or cubes or spirals, whatever you have on hand. This mead sat with the oak on it for about two weeks. After oaking it, we went ahead and bottled it. I didn't think it needed any help with acid balance, but if yours needs more acidity, you can add malic, citric, or tartaric to taste. Here is a timeline of how long each stage of this brew is, if you'd like to follow along for your own reference. Since it's bottled, I let it set for a little bit and I shared it with a friend to help me with the tasting. So let's hop on over to him. Welcome Rick from the Home Winemaking Channel to a mead tasting. We've been tasting some things and I've tasted a piment of yours absolutely fantastic. I'm hoping that my mead uh, is just as fantastic as your climate. So thanks for being here. Let's, let's hope so. <laughs> thanks for having <laughs> me on, Garrett. <laughs> so this, uh, I already explained to you, this is a tart cherry mead, and we've, we've kind of walked through it already. Viewers have seen the process. This does feature a very interesting um, uh, oak that it's called Amberana. And I, we had talked yep. about it some. It's got like a cinnamony, graham cracker, spiced element to it, which is kind of different than what you get, obviously, with most oaks. So you should get some of that here. But feel free to pour yours whenever you're ready. I haven't ever made a tart cherry mead. This is my first time doing that. And I expected when I first started it, I expected this like extreme... Um, tartness of course tart cherry and uh, i was shocked to see it's not insanely tart so yeah feel free to give me all your notes wow that nose is incredible yeah and it's not necessarily the cherry punching through i think a lot of that's i'm assuming coming from the honey there's mm -hmm. like some almost like minty character to it 
Yeah. And um, just like a ton of just um, fruitier like esters that I would call them. Um, like fresh, like just like the smell of just like freshness. Yeah. And definitely some honey. I'm not well versed in the types of honey, but um, the honey is punching through big time, big time on the nose, which is awesome. Um, this was clover honey, which was uh, also fun. I think okay. I used just a just regular. I didn't go crazy with my honey choice um, here, but it is interesting because it does pop through quite a bit. Yeah. Hmm. And I'm getting that cherry a little bit. It's like the cherry is very well mixing with the honey. So it's not like two distinct smells. It's like one smell that is mm. this new thing yeah. of those two things together, right. you know? Yeah, and it's got a lot of residual sugar, I can tell, right? It's pretty sweet. It is back sweetened. Um, so this was back sweetened yep. as a, because uh, I thought it definitely needed it. Yeah. So. And then the alcohol seems a little bit, um, you know, I work in wines where we're always in that 10 or 11 or you know, up into 14. Right. What am I guessing? We're at here like six or seven, something like that. We are currently at 11 point. Wow. No eight. way. 11.8. Wow. That's, that's crazy. Math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that does not drink like uh, 11.8. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess if I think of it as like a white wine um, that's been back sweetened, I guess you can kind of, especially if it's got a little bit of age on it. Um, yeah. What kind of age is on this? It's only about three months. Three months. Yeah. yeah. I'll be honest, that's like really surprising. I'm not catching a lot of the uh, just alcohol really mm -hmm. on the nose. Sweetness is deceiving. That's why so many mead makers can, uh, that's why I recommend a lot of mead makers if you're really trying to save a brew that you might find that's too hot or something, of course age is gonna yep. help. But a quick fix is honestly some sweetness. And uh, it's yep. a cheat that's, I don't love, but it's there. Yep, so actually this is a question for you. So mm -hmm. in winemaking, we're generally back sweetening with sugar, like table sugar or simple syrup because the sugars in a grape are fructose and glucose. Mm -hmm. um, you're kind of in this hybrid world where it's like, do you do what beer guys do? Do you do what? Do you use fructose, like corn syrup? What are you, what exactly are you using to back sweeten? I think most of the time you're gonna use honey. If I used something that was non-honey related, it'd be very purposeful. For example, yeah. like uh, I made a peach pie mead and I wanted to mm -hmm. highlight honey. So I back sweetened with a little bit of honey a little bit of brown sugar as well and something else I can't remember. But most of the time you're going to use honey to to continue to pronounce that flavor. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think about that. The mead makers, as I'm sure you've experienced, we can be pretty persnickety about things, um, <laughs> pretty snobby yeah. about the, the brewing world. And so I think most people would say, Honey is like your exclusive back sweetening choice. Yeah, unless that you makes have a total sense. Reason. As I think about it, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you have a sugar right there to uh, to use. This used um, blueberry blossom honey to back sweeten, which is something I recommend okay. if you're going to use. I, I remember why I used clover to start. A lot of the flavor profile from clover or really any honey gets blasted in the primary. So coming back okay. with the higher quality honey for back sweetening helps you keep the nice flavors that you want without losing that makes sense. the money. Yeah. Yeah. And what I've found in the couple meads that I've done is if you ferment them dry, mm -hmm. it is hard to, you know, maintain that honey character. Um, right. That's where, you know, the piment you just tried was back sweet or was uh, stalled, basically right. cold crash to stop the fermentation, which I think Similar to adding honey back, um, it's kind of preserving the honey. But it's interesting when you crash something like that, it sometimes feels like it even turns it up even higher. Like what that original thing was, whether it's a grape-based wine or a honey-based wine, I think you're just breaking things down. Um, and I think also, you know, these yeasts, when it comes to grapes, um, being that I said there's fructose and glucose, um, most of them are glucophilic, 
So they're going to leave the fructose. That's going to be the last thing they ferment. Oh. So if you stall it, you're left with more fructose, which is a little bit sweeter tasting. You know? Interesting. Hmm. So I never knew that. Yeah. That's so really that's why if you ever want to start a stalled wine up, you'll use uh, fructophilic yeast like EC1118. Oh. So I'm just testing the pH because I yeah. can't help but know the pH of things, you know. <laughs> I'm curious too. I I uh, don't yeah. do much pH testing unless I'm concerned about the actual fermentation. But yeah, so you're you're like 3.69. So that's kind of like uh, that's like what I would do like a red wine at 3.69 is pretty good for like a Cabernet Sauvignon. I think that could be why it's tasting so like sweet though too, you know, because that pine yeah. that you just tasted was probably like three point yeah. um, three. Oh, so interesting. substantially more acidic, and that's why it's being so many years old is um, kind of hanging in there with freshness. I didn't. Um, I I'll put up for the viewers a final gravity. I don't have mine referenced right now, but. Definitely does help with the mead character. And I think it contrasts the tart cherry, which was what I was worried about with this. Um, I yeah. was also worried about this being a medicinal cherry. I, I have always had experiences with cherry things where it's like, it tastes like the this cough syrup that you had when you were a kid. And this doesn't yep. present that way in my opinion. Yeah, I think there's, there's definitely not that cough syrup cherry, that's for sure. There is the interesting smell <laughs> um, that I don't know what it is, but it's good. You is know? it the Amberana it's, maybe with the cinnamon? It could be. Graham cracker. It could be. It could be. Um, I mean, I think there's even some like vanilla, which could be coming from the Amberana. Mm -hmm. Um, I know like American oak is going to give you a lot of vanilla. Um, I'm experimenting with some Amberana myself, so I can't like nail that smell profile offhand. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. You know. Yeah. Well, I have been pleasantly surprised by this. So I will say, I think this would be best served cold, very cold. Mm, um, okay. So, yeah, so I think that sweetness, um, I think of this as like a white wine. I know um, sometimes you're probably thinking carbonated cold, still warm. Um, but I would drink this cold personally. Um, hmm. I think it, I kind of categorize it as like a sweet, uh, white wine, which I'm always going to drink around like 35 or 40 degrees. Huh. I'll have to try so, that now. Huh. Yeah. I think, I think what it does is, um, kind of, it, it gets like, if you drink too many sips of something that's a little bit sweet, mm. that doesn't have a ton of acid to, uh, back that sweetness, it gets yeah. like, like tiring almost, you know? Yeah. yeah but when it's true. cold, it's like refreshing and you can't have it, mm. can't get enough of it. Seems like a, that's so like give a, it a try. Mead, mead hack. I'm gonna have to try it now. That's it's a mead hack. And again, I've mentioned with the wines, I'm always paying attention to the temperature. If I ever had a winery, I'd always have a little thing on it that says serve at this temperature. Cause I just think it makes such a difference, you know? Right. Interesting. Speaking of a pro wine experience, um, you are, well, also Piment. You've, you've got mead pretty down as well. I'll say that, but one of your main things you do is the home winemaking channel. Would you mind giving us a quick little uh, pitch for what you do over there? Sure. Yep. So the home winemaking channel is my YouTube channel where I try to, when I started it, I was reading these forums and you kind of have the same four guys just repeating the same information, but it wasn't necessarily that correct or even that technical. Um, so as an engineer by trade, and as an avid winemaker, I tried to deep, deep dive into every piece of wine literature there is, talk to these professional winemakers, and distill that information down to the home winemakers so that instead of making this stuff that maybe your grandpa made that smelled like acetone, um, you can make some wines that you might buy on the shelf for 40 or $50, but for you it might cost 7 or $8. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what my mission is at the home winemaking channel. I love that. That's awesome. Well, I'll be putting all the links I can find for Rick in his channel, which the channel is one link, but if there's any way to support Rick, I'll put some other ones too there sure. below. And uh, I hope you'll go check him out. He has been super awesome to help me give me feedback for my things. And I look forward to sharing more stuff with you because you've been a wealth of knowledge. all the free drinks you want to send me. <laughs> well, I got plenty. Don't worry. I can send you lots yeah. of stuff. 
Thank you for your time, Rick. I hope that everyone will go over and check out the home winemaking channel. And uh, I hope to see everyone else in a future video if they'll come on back. So thanks awesome. for being here, Rick. Sounds good. Thanks, Garrett. Cheers. See you later. Mm -hmm.